Hi YouTube, we are back with a new NHL 24 video. As everyone in the community know, I'm representing the casual player base. You're not Division 1 or 2 player, you want to get better, you want to enjoy and have fun. So today I will talk about the best strategies and settings you need to use as a new or casual player in NHL 24. If you're watching this video and you enjoy this video, please make sure you like and subscribe, it really helps me a lot and I'm also live on Twitch 5 days a week, so make sure you give me a follow over there as well. Without losing any time, let's jump into the video and have a look on the best settings and strategies you need to use. First of all, when you just open the Hockey Ultimate Team, you have to go over to My Team and then you will find Strategies and Settings. We'll start with Settings. One of the biggest additions this year is New Controller Settings. If you go into the Controller Settings tab, you will see we have New Total Control and Skill Sticks. For people who play the game before, skill stick is probably the way to go because it's much easier to actually be competitive. If you want to have fun, there is no any reason why you would not use total control. The reason why I'm saying it, you can now do all the skill moves by just pressing one button. So you want to score that Michigan from the back of the net, you never was able to do it before. This year you will be able to do that. It will not be easy, don't take me wrong, not every single time you will press that button you will be able to score those cool goals, but at least now EA is giving us an opportunity for the lower division players to actually do that. Doesn't matter which total control or skill stick you prefer more, it's up to you, it's personal preference. If you're new to the game, I probably would suggest to go with the total control. If you're a player who already played last year but is still not quite sure what he wants to do, then skill stick probably would be easier for you. Always make sure the auto backskate is off. You don't really want your players to backskate when you're trying to catch on a breakaways. Shooting control stays the same. Vibration, my personal preference is off. It's up to you what you want to choose. I just really get annoyed when the VAC controller is vibrating. Online pass assist, I always leave it on 100 because I want a maximum support in passing. Passing every year is very difficult. This year, with a new icon passing in the game, it is much better easier it is more accurate but again i will just leave it on 100 and we will see how it goes later in the year the next one i probably would suggest you go straight away is on ice trainer you really don't need those annoying arrows on the ice to tell you what and when you need to do you need to start learning making decisions yourself so for me everything is off except the offside warning offside warning is important because you really don't have a time to pay attention is your guys on side or offside and you it, it is coming helpful i never turn it off and Every year it just helps me. I'm getting my players out from the zone before I enter with the pack. And then the first time we can actually go into the hot objectives and turn hot objective notifications on or off. Keep them on because it's a new feature and it will always pop on the screen and shows once you're completing some of the objectives. Let's say you need to score one goal and once you score that goal, it actually comes out and says you completed the objective. It's a nice thing to know. And again, it doesn't really disturb you a lot. Also, I probably would suggest you leave the crossplay on. It's a feature we really want and need in the game because you want to face your friends, maybe people from the other consoles, and you don't really want to search for a rival's game for 20 minutes. Now let's go into the audio and visual settings. So auto zoom, turn it off. You really want to make sure you always see the maximum on the eyes. Same about the camera. A lot of people use classic. I prefer zone because it pretty much, once you are in the blue line, it gives you that visibility of all three lines. From my perspective, it keeps prefer up. Skater fatigue indicator on. Player indicator size. I prefer it small because this year there is a lot of on ice animations already and you really don't get more destruction. Off screen player indicated on, 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 on. All these you just leave on because you really need what is where and when. Okay, now let's go down to the puck highlights. I prefer puck highlight large because I want to always know where the puck is. Same about the puck size. Score clock overlay authentic. You don't really change that. Same about the shootout camera. You always leave it dynamic low. Regards the volume, it's personal preference. Because I'm creating a content, I always turn it off. I don't really want to get any copyright strikes. If you're playing on the TV, at home, on a sofa, in your living room, probably keep it on because it just makes the game more authentic and actually enjoyable. You can leave goal only if you really get annoyed with the commentators, but I prefer that it's play by play because again, it gives it makes the game a little bit more authentic. Okay, now when we are done with the settings, let's go and have a look on the strategies I suggest you guys use if you're new to the game or just learning or in general just want to have more fun. So I will go through every single one to explain why I'm using them and maybe it will help you to get better. Okay, now we're on the strategies screen. A lot of people prefer to use the same strategy across all four lines. I usually split it. My first two lines have one strategy and my third and fourth line had a different strategy. So I'm playing the game already for four days and these strategies at the moment works the best for me. Every single year everyone uses behind the net. This year I find that behind the net is not very efficient because it's just not so easy. Again, a lot of people will try to score those Michigan goals and in general, but 
Behind the net probably is only efficient if you're division one or two players. So once you are increasing your division and when you are getting a little bit better in the game, you could possibly move to behind the net. Early in the game and how the game plays this year, I would suggest crush the net. To allow shots from the point. Great for taking away the goaltender vision to open up shots through screen deflection opportunities to score off the rebounds. This year it's so so easy to score on the rebounds and same about the tipped goals. So basically if you have a player with a big tipper it will be so 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 fun. You screen the goaltender, you shoot from the point and it creates so many rebounds or just directed shots into the net. Again you don't have to use it but I would suggest you at least give it a try. So also carry them. I usually leave it on five. I tried it on maximum. I tried it all the way down. And in the general, I just find them the best. You really want the players to carry and dump in the same time. So leave it in the middle. Cycle and shoot. I want my players to cycle and shoot, but not a lot. So I would leave this on four. Efficiency and energy. This is where it always gets tricky. Sometimes you feel your players don't have enough energy or they are not skating fast enough or in the same time the energy is running out very quickly. So I played around on the maximum, I played it on zero and I came up then the best it works for me if I'm leaving it on three. Same about don't block and block. I like to leave it on three because I like my players to block it sometimes but not every single time. If my players will constantly collapse and block the shots, they will screen my goaltender and you know what, even in the real hockey, once your goaltender don't see the puck, he cannot make the save. So I have the same exact thing for two lines. For my third and fourth line, I have this exact same curry dump, cycle shoot, efficiency, energy and don't block. The only thing I change is overload because usually the players on my third and fourth line are not as good as my first and second. So I will probably shoot more one-timers and overload is very good with screening the goaltender as well. Set up the corner with all offensive personnel in one side of the ice, cycle the puck, use player movement, misdirection and puck puck movement along the outside of the ice to pull defensive player out of the position to create scoring opportunities. I believe then from division 6 to division 3 these strategies will work very good. Look at the defense sliders, I all have them all turn off because to be fair, I don't really see any big difference. I tried it in the mid, I tried it like fully up to the maximum and I didn't really notice, at least with my game style, that they're making any impact. Okay, now let's talk about the team strategies. I like to use 1-2-2 passive and 1-2-2 red. If you change this to 1-2-2 aggressive, I would suggest you go with 1-2-2 blue as well because both of them work very well together. 1-2-2 aggressive would probably not work very well with 1-2-2 red. If you're really, really struggling and giving up a lot of breakaways, then 1-4 would be the better choice for you. You can see all the players will be on the blue line and will try to protect any of the breakaways. I think it's quite toxic to use 1-4, but in the end of the day, you want to win the game, so you have to use any advantage you can get in the game. For me, 1-2-2 aggressive and 1-2-2 red works very good. Drop 4 check. I usually leave it in the middle. You can always change it in the middle of the game. If you think you need to increase this or decrease, you can always do it in the middle of the game or in between the periods. For defensive pressure and defensive strategy, I use contain puck and collapsing. You can also use protect the net and previous years it was quite efficient and quite good, but this year I tried contain puck and I feel that it's playing a little bit better for me. If you look at offensive strategy, then offensive pressure, I use standard, contain breakout, strong side slant, and quick breakaway leave zone early. I never really understood the power play strategies in this game. I don't even think the power play as a, in general exists in NHL franchise, but this is what I use and I don't really see any difference, but you can try it out. So power play formatation is umbrella, face up formatation aggressive, offensive pressure aggressive, Power play carry down all the way down to zero, five back, stay wide, and that's pretty much it. Okay guys, these are the strategies and settings I use and they work very well so far for me. Maybe later in the game when overalls will increase and the game will be patched multiple times, it may change, but at the moment I probably will stick to it and try to get my way up to Division 3. So far, I'm doing great. Let me know down in the comment section below. Do you enjoy NHL 24? Do you have any questions you want me to answer? Because I'm here representing the casual player base. Have a good one and see you next time.